So just to get started, can you just please tell our audience um, why you decided to be a mindfulness teacher? I really suffered really bad as a teenager. I felt like I didn't fit in. Um, I, I didn't feel like I had any authentic friends. Um, you know, high school was basically like the worst four years I ever had. Mm -hmm. And I never really had any tools or any skills to manage what I would call dealing with my inner work. I mean, I did okay in school. I could take a test and pass a test and get decent grades and I could do okay. But, but my, but the inner world of my thoughts, my emotions, how I felt about myself, how I felt about the world and really a big way, how much uh, of my attention was consumed by worrying about what other people thought of me. Yeah. And, and I, and, and so just living inside of that, uh, psychological environment was just a lot of a lot of suffering and confusion for me mm -hmm. and I, did, I didn't know what to do yeah um, so but so you know fast fast forward and when I got out of high school when I was 19 um, I was introduced to mindfulness practice by actually Daniel Goleman's son I know I saw Daniel Goleman on your thing I grew up down the street from Daniel Goleman and I was friends with his children so they, they knew that I was having a hard time. So I learned mindfulness when I was 19. And I would, I would have to make an argument to say that it kind of saved my life in terms of it just allowed me to realize that there was a tool and there was a strategy and there was a way I could turn my awareness and my attention inward. And I, and I had some agency and I had some influence. There yeah. were things I could do about how I thought and felt about life. And that was just tremendous relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can, can you share with us why you believe it's so important to get these mindfulness education, like it, this mindfulness curriculum into education at all levels in schools? Because like you said, it like helps save your life. How, how can it make a difference um, with, with people and especially teenagers? I, I'll, I'll say a couple of things about that. And I think actually the thing I want to say about that is it's the most basic, basic skills of mindfulness that are important. Like, like I use a uh, teenager taught me this, like uh, mindfulness is like basketball, right? Like if you want to play basketball, you have to learn how to dribble the ball. Like yeah. you ha if you can't dribble, you can't play. Mm -hmm. Right. You can, you can be able to pass and shoot and dunk and do all that stuff. But if you can't dribble, you're no good. So just this idea of, of, of dealing with attention. So, just the, the learning how to see that I can pay attention to something other than what I'm thinking about. That's what blew, that literally blew my mind because I lived inside my mind and everything I thought, I thought was true. If I thought nobody liked me, if I had the thought nobody liked me, then I believed that nobody liked me. If somebody gave me a dirty look or somebody was mean to me, I'd be like, oh, that person hates me. And I would believe that that person hate me. So everything that happened in my mind, I just took as like being true. Yeah. And so when I learned that I could pay attention to my breath, right? We talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. Or my body or sounds. I learned that I could get out of my mind in the story. You know, the story I had. I had this story going all the time. It was like a terrible movie. And, and I was the main character of the worst movie ever. And then I realized, wait a minute, like I don't even have, this is like just like not real. Yeah. So I think just like that, that, that self, I would call that, I guess, in, in emotional intelligence, self-awareness of being able to realize, oh, I'm just having a thought. I'm just having an emotion. Oh, I'm just stressed out because I have a lot of homework and I got in a fight with my parents and I'm angry and I'm angry. And when I'm angry, I don't always make good choices. Uh, I need to be careful. So the self-awareness piece, it, mindfulness is like in and of itself not that important. It's what we do with it that matters. So just being able to unhook from that obsessive thinking, I think if that's all people got, that would be a lot. It's, it was huge for me. You know, there's like a lot, well, there's a lot of different like techniques, meditation techniques, right? So everyone has different things they do with meditation, also different things with mindfulness. And what um, people have studied over the years is that um, – the, like the science of mindfulness, how it helps with focus, attention, and academics, behavior, even like illness, you know? So can you explain how, like, what, can you explain how mindfulness does all that? Like the science of mindfulness? 
Well, I don't, you know, and also there's not a lot of research about illness and stuff like that. I think there's two, there's two, there's two things we can say for sure. And I'll tell you how they work. There's two things that we could say like research wise that works is that mindfulness practice, continuous mindfulness practice improves people's ability to focus their attention, right? Which with a really valuable skill. Yeah. So that, that's clear. It helps focus attention because it helps focus attention. It also helps people increase emotional regulation. So if I practice something like, say I practice mindfulness of breathing every day and I train my attention to go back to my breath, back to my breath, back to my breath. My mind wanders. I go back to my breath. Now when I'm walking down the halls at school or I go into a sporting event or I'm going to any situation where I get triggered into anger or fear, my body comes on, comes online. I get this big Wi-Fi signal of, and then instead of getting, instead of going up into my mind, I breathe and I come down into the body. So I learn how to regulate my nervous system through paying attention to something that's autonomic, like breathing is an autonomic system. Mm -hmm. So what it does is, is it now I have this little check engine light when I get angry, when I get scared, when I get sad, I just a check engine light goes off of my system. And instead of freaking out, what do I do? I relax and I take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Because I've trained my mind to do that. Mm -hmm. I've done it 15,000 times that now my mind knows that that's actually an option as well. 